Hi, I'm Sarah Elaine Smith, the author of Mary Lou is Everywhere, um, coming out soon in France. And I just wanted to say hello. I was supposed to be preparing right now to come and visit you for the Festival American, but sadly, that is an ill-advised trip during the pandemic. And I'm sure you especially don't want any visits from Americans right now. Um, totally understand that. Anyway, I hope that I will be able to meet you in person and talk about the book with you someday soon. And until then, I just wanted to introduce it and read a little tiny bit for you to give you a taste. So in Mary Lou is Everywhere, Jude, who is a mixed race teenage girl, goes missing. And Cindy, who is a white teenage girl, tries to take her place. There's a lot more to it than that, but I think that gives you a place to begin. Um, and what I'm going to read for you right now is actually my favorite section of the whole book. And it's one that I almost never read um, at events because it's so short, but as a special treat for you, here it is. Apparently, when they didn't find any hint of Jude in the correctional system, the police began checking the hospitals. In Mon General, they found a girl who couldn't remember her name. She matched Jude's description. She had not produced any ID. The hospital records averred someone had left her in one of the courtesy wheelchairs at the emergency entrance on May 19th, a few days after Jude's last sighting. She had been signed in under the name Janet Lockjaw, which afterward, it was clear, had been some species of joke. Apart from being severely malnourished, she carried a bone infection in her jaw. She couldn't or wouldn't say where she had been. But when they asked her if her name was Judith Vanderjohn, she said yes. When they asked her if she lived in Deep Valley with her mother, she said yes. Was she hurt? Yes. Who did this to her? Yes. Then she switched to saying wow. She stayed stuck on wow. Wow, wow, wow. Wow, 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 wow. The nurses, when they thought nobody was listening, called her the human ambulance. In a different hospital, they found another black girl who said she wasn't who she said she was. She had also been dumped in a courtesy, courtesy wheelchair, although all she needed was a dose of Narcan. They had kept her on psych eval for a week because she had self-administered cuts on her arms and claimed no knowledge of the United States of America. Instead, she insisted, she had come from another world. You think this place is real, but it's not, she said. This is a display, like fireworks. Very pretty, but not real. She nevertheless proceeded to give the police a full description, address, and social security number for her ex-boyfriend and advised them as to which drawers in his mother's china hutch hid his kitty porn hard drives. Detective Torboli made the arrests. Her information closed down a handful of small timers. When he went back to tell her the outcome, she had discharged herself and disappeared. He found her months later living in one of the halfway houses. She was running a side business doing manicures for the other girls. She had made a detailing paintbrush out of her own hair taped with exquisite precision to a golf pencil, and she accepted cigarettes, Red Bull, or dish chores in payment for her art. All the fractional housing girls lit their smokes and picked their eyebrows with landscaped fingernails of painted tigers and pink lightning. She thanked Detective Torboli for what he had done, although she maintained that everything was a dharma and all dharmas should be regarded as dreams. Thank you for listening to that. And um, from Pittsburgh, where I live, all of my love and affection to Sonatine Editions. Um, I just, I'm so thrilled that my book will be traveling across the Atlantic. It's such an honor and I can't wait to celebrate with you in person. It'll happen someday. Um, and until then, take care. Bye.